What is the funniest thing you've ever witnessed right in front of you? A few years ago, I was playing Pictionary with my wife and her parents. But it was my turn I had to draw the bearded lady. I'm terrible at drawing, so I came up with some stick figure with boobs and a beard with a large triangle behind it. It was supposed to be a circus tent. Everyone starts guessing, but no one is close. Suddenly, my father-in-law jumps up and shouts vagina. Clitoris. Clitoris. He was so caught up in getting the right answer that he just kept shouting it. At this point, we all lost it. I have never laughed so hard in my life. My mother-in-law still has the bearded lady posted on our fridge. Edit. I was able to get the bearded lady scanned. Note my arrow in an attempt to point out the beard. Also, I should point out that my FIL was across from me, so it was upside down to him. So I'm sitting outside of Boudin Sourdough Bakery in San Francisco near the Fisherman's Wharf, and see the guy come out with one of their bread bowls full of soup. Now if you've never been here let me tell you the seagulls are everywhere, and pretty aggressive about trying to get your food. So the guy goes and sits down, and starts eating his clam chowder and the birds are everywhere, squawking like seagulls do, and you can see it's irritating this guy. So he makes the mistake of tearing off a piece of bread and throwing it to the gulls. He thought it was bad before, but once they knew they could get food out of him he was surrounded. So one of the seagulls lands near the guy, and is standing with its back to him about 5 feet away. The guy gets up walks over and kicks the s out of this bird, as soon as he turns around he realizes this was a mistake, I would say there were 50 seagulls on this guy's food. He then screams, oh I see how it is, you send your retarded friend to distract me while you sons of b enjoy my food. It was quite funny. TLDR seagulls are jerks. I was at camp as a kid one summer, and a tedious counselor was telling a story. Everyone thought he was boring, but for once, he had our attention. We stood in a circle in some woods, watching as his tale telling became more animated due to our attention. At a climactic moment of his story, he pointed skyward and inclined his head, saying, and I looked up. At that moment, a bird flew over and shat on his forehead. I thought I would stop breathing from laughing so hard. My university choir went to Finland one year, which was an amazing experience. The day we arrived, my brain was a bit foggy from the jet lag, but I wanted to take advantage of being there so I went with my friends to explore Helsinki. I was walking down the street talking to one of my friends next to me when I walked straight into a pole. I wasn't hurt at all, just surprised, but as I collected myself I noticed that the only person who had noticed aside from my friend was this random Finnish dude on the other side of the street who was intensely cracking up from what he had seen. I think the sight of him laughing uproariously at my stupid moment is one of the funniest sights I've ever seen. I watched a group of special needs adults ride gak carts. One of them would drive halfway around the track perfectly then just slam his brakes for no reason. Another crashed into the wall and when the gak cart employee put it back in the right path, she yelled, it won't go. It won't go. The employee had no idea why it wouldn't and then asked her if she was pressing the gas or the brake. All of a sudden she took off and hit every wall till the end of that lap. The ending was the best part, when the employee flagged them to come in, to park, one girl drove straight at him and he had to jump over her cart. She hit the wall behind him, ricocheted off, and kept going. Another female went into the parking area but never slowed down and drove straight into the already parked cart in front of her. She hit it so hard that she had a big booger hanging out of her nose afterwards. Then the girl who ignored the employee flagging people in earlier, finally came around again and the guy is waving the flag again at her and she almost forgot and at the last second turns into the parking area. However, she hits the median of the two lanes they have for the carts to park. Her cart is stuck in a concrete median with her front wheels still spinning. This is not me making fun of special needs people at all, but if you were watching this live, you would have laughed your ass off too. In 8th grade I had a friend named Roland who was about 4 foot tall and another friend named Carl who was about 200 pounds and about 5 feet 7 inches. During lunch, in the cafeteria, Carl was getting his food and Roland noticed his sweatpants sitting on the bench. Roland put on Carl's sweatpants over his own clothes and proceeded to walk around with them pulled up over his head. Carl saw it and ran to catch Roland. We had tears in our eyes from laughing as Carl chased his own sweatpants around the cafeteria. I was in the third grade and I had done the most important thing in my short life by then by becoming friends with the popular girls. The popular girls and I grew to be very close and would hang out all the time. One day, head popular girl summons us and says we're going behind the hills. The other damsels hop along toward the hills together while I stay skeptically trudge along. Once there, all the girls lie down on the grass behind the hills, so they're not visible by the narcs that patrol recess and make you stand at the wall if you misbehave. Once they've all lay down, I can't help but ask what are you guys doing, and head popular girl responds with um. We're having sex with our imaginary boyfriends. I laugh uncomfortably. And they actually proceed to have sex. 
with air at eight years old just writhing on the floor and not even knowing what they're doing and making sounds quite funny very uncomfortable i was at a sci-fi convention with a friend and we get on the hotel elevator a 10 year old or so girl gets undressed as seven of nine and these two fat guys dressed as jedi behind us start mocking her for not having the goods to fill out that costume fucking gross my friend who's also rather large turns around looks them up and down and starts heckling them for being fat jedi can't you use the force to put those f m ms down the pizza is calling you to the dark side do you have to use the force to get your fat ass into those robes those aren't even Jedi robes, those are the hotel bath robes. Everyone in the elevator was cracking up, and when the girl got off on the next floor she had a great big grin on her face, turned around, and high-fived my friend on her way off the elevator. The fat Jedi got off on the next floor as fast as they could it wasn't even the floor they were supposed to get off. Went sledding the other day, and some random dog took a major dump right at the bottom of the hill we were at. My friend screams up to warn everyone, then points it out to let everyone know. One kid comes zooming down the hill, realizes he's in the direct path of the shit pile, tries to stop before he hits it, bails right on top of it, and smears a little path of it as he's trying to stop tumbling. In a flash he grabbed his sled, then nope the fuck out. I didn't even see him leave. If he had just kept going he would've went right over it, and been totally fine. I was driving in Buffalo, New York, and it was a total whiteout. One thing they say is never to stop in a whiteout, because a tractor trailer will just rear end you to hell. So I found a car and started riding his ass just because I could only see his brake lights when I was only inches from his bumper. Then the brake lights started flickering like a strobe light, and the car came to a stop. I didn't know what to do, so I got out of the car. There was this huge black guy standing there, and he yelled, Yo man, I can't see s. I laughed my ass off, and took the lead for a while. Once at college there was a nice spot on the walkway outside our dorm, covered in a light dusting of snow. My friends and I all slipped on our way home. Later from our common room window we saw others falling. Within half an hour, eleven of us had gathered around the windows with tea and popcorn, watching every single person who walked down that path fall or flail crazily to keep from falling. One time a really tall guy wound up doing a chicken dance for about seven feet, but managed to stay upright. At the end there was vigorous applause, but not from our room. We rushed outside, turned around, and saw that at least four other windows in our dorm had crowds gathered around them. We waved and eventually all gathered on the lawn for an impromptu falling party. My best friend and I are obsessed with ghost hunting, so we naturally went on the ghost tour that is offered in Old Town, Albuquerque, New Mexico. We were the only two locals, but there were about seven people from Canada. We get to this haunted window in a building that is now a restaurant, however, we failed to realize we were the only two people standing in front of the window only about a foot away. As we listened to this ghost story we were staring into this window, without realizing the restaurant was still open, and BAM a lady basically runs past the window. We were so scared we were screaming at the top of our lungs. I couldn't move and my best friend grabs me around the waist and tries to run off with me, I'm 5 feet 9 inches and she's 5 feet 2 inches. It isn't until we finally get ourselves together that we look up and realize we scared one of the Canadian guys so badly he had taken off running and was now a block and a half away. The three of us looked really stupid, but it's still one of my favorite memories. Single mom at the beach with her I would estimate three-year-old son. The kid is having a very good day playing in the sand. All of a sudden she gets a phone call and starts yelling at who I presume is the father, has a fit, and grabs the kid and starts telling him it is time to leave. She is pulling him along by the arm and he getting dragged and she is yelling on the phone. Finally the kid lets go and he turns around to yell at him it is time to leave and to hurry up. The kid standing there in his water wings, sun hat, and holding his yellow sand bucket yells at his mom, I am a kid. My legs aren't long enough, I can't move that fast, what do you expect? Everyone around just started cracking up. In high school chemistry, we used to play the plunger game during homeroom where we toss a plunger in the air for various numbers of rotations and try to have it land stuck to the floor. One day as the tosses were getting a bit extreme in the high ceiling lab, one guy tossed it a bit too high and it landed on top of one of the light fixtures, which was amusing enough in itself. Later in the class, we were back in the lab. The teacher was a bald, red-faced, heavily mustached man and was in the middle of explaining our experiment when the plunger teeters off of the light fixture and plants itself directly atop his head. The combination of the perfect splunk and the sight of him staring up at the lightning rod on top of his head in stunned silence was too much to handle. The other night, my boyfriend and I were bored in stone so we decided to wreak some havoc. My friend had bought me a laser pointer for Christmas so I could play with my cat with it and instead, we decided to point it at people outside our apartment complex. Just so you know, we live in Atlanta, right next door to a liquor store and in a pretty shady part of town. My boyfriend decides to point it at this guy who was clearly cracked out. 
this man starts freaking out. He just stops in his tracks and holds his hands up in the air and screams, put the lasers on me. Come on white devils, put the lasers on me. Now, we are about five stories up so he couldn't see us, but he just goes on this ramp for about 10 minutes screaming about lasers and to bring it. I know it's pretty awful to mess with someone like that, but at the time I could not control myself from laughing hysterically. Only after the laughter subsided did we realize he was probably terrified and thought he was about to get sniped or something. Oops. In high school me and my mates were stood in a circle just talking, waiting for the teacher to turn up to let us inside. This was after dinner break, or lunch, and hundreds of seagulls flocked to the playgrounds to scavenge food. One of those seagulls shat on my mate's face, my mate being quite hard, read a bit of a jock for you merkins, shouted all right who f spat on me. You're f dead. We were on the floor laughing and then the realization on his face when he knew it wasn't spit and in fact, bird shite. He actually said it's not spit is it? With a grin on his face. I still crack up now thinking about it. Was playing soccer. My buddy and his brother were on opposing team. I was advancing towards their net and my buddy came at me from left, his brother on my right. When they both got close to kick the ball away from me I stopped the ball. They both missed the ball and kicked each other in the shins, bodies collided, heads collided with a loud thunk. The way it all synchronized was so funny I couldn't continue running and just rolled on the floor laughing. I thought it was over but then they both got mad at each other and started fist fighting. I was laughing so hard watching it all unfold in front of me I though I'm going to pass out. One of the funniest memories I have. On a dry summer night a couple of years ago, a bunch of friends and I were drinking in a park. We were at the bottom of a hill with trees and were there for hours. Every time one of us went up the hill into the trees to pee, it made pee mud, so the next person to pee would pee a little higher up. We even had a roll of toilet paper on a branch. Well after a couple hours, one of my, girl, friends went up the hill to pee, and slipped in the pee mud. She's a longboarder so she has pretty good balance even when intoxicated, and we all hear wah wah hua and she comes majestically sliding down the hill out of the trees, in a half squat with her pants around her knees, without falling. I was laughing so hard I was crying at that one, and I'll never forget it. I was getting dressed in our bedroom and was naked from the waist down, standing at the end of the bed. My wife must have seen something behind me poking out from under the bed, and went down on two knees to fish it out. I really had not been paying close attention to how close she was, and bent over to pick up my underwear just as she straightened up with both of her hands full of whatever she had fished out from under the bed. As you might imagine, she was surprised to see my ass a mere few inches from her face, and as a result she accidentally lost her balance, and instead of dropping whatever she had, and steadying herself on the bed, she held onto it for dear life and slowly tipped over falling face first into the crack of my hairy ass. I was, as you might imagine, surprised as hell that there was suddenly a face in my ass. I stood up so quickly and clenched my butt cheeks so tight that I locked her nose firmly between my cheeks, and then time stood still. I was shocked, and stood like a statue in stunned silence. She started screaming a muffled wail into my ass crack. And we both wondered what to do next. She started flailing wildly to find a purchase, and suddenly she realized she could drop whatever she was holding and push herself away. She grabbed my ass and shoved so hard she nearly pushed me halfway across the room. She sprung up and ran to the restroom so fast you could almost hear the Doppler effect and started washing her face while both crying and laughing at the same time. To this day all I have to do to get her to cringe in fear and embarrassment is mention the ass crack incident. While on a motorcycle trip across half the country my father and I witnessed the tail end of a possible road rage incident. We were riding up the highway when one car passed a pickup and didn't think much of it. About five minutes later we round a bend and there are both cars parked on the shoulder, drivers in mid fisticuffs. As we passed I looked over and the fighters were so involved in their battle they forgot to take the terrain into account, fell and rolled down a slightly steep hill together. It wasn't until we stopped for a break about an hour later that my dad laughs and says oh and what the f was that fight about anyway? I had forgotten about it until then and all I saw in my mind was those two bozos tumbling down the hillside and kicking up a dust cloud. F New Mexico Back in high school, we were all traipsing across the grounds to the exit gate at 3.30. Someone had forgotten to collect all of the balls from P.E. and they were just lying around on the path. One girl was too busy talking to her friend and didn't realize they were on the path, she stood on one and did that typical dancing on a ball thing like a show dog or a slapstick clown. That was hilarious on its own, but then when she had managed to extricate herself from the ball, she stood on another one right in front of her. I thought that suddenly happened in the Marx Brothers, it was a glorious day. I was with my extended family at a local amusement park when I was 10. My uncle and I went on a boat ride where you drive the boat around a small track. You could drive the boat freely, but it had no throttle control. It's a pretty boring ride unless you have someone like my uncle to ride with. 
Halfway through the ride, he suddenly turned the boat completely sideways and blocked the track. Since the boats had no throttle control, everyone bumped into us and got stuck as well. With a boat pileup holding up the ride, the attendants came to help my uncle, who started acting like he had special needs and couldn't understand what they were telling him to do. Every time they got him going straight again, he would keep turning until it got stuck again. The attendants tried to get me to tell them what to do, and I did but my uncle would just do the opposite and kept turning sideways. Eventually the attendant jumped on the boat and stared at the rest of the way while my uncle just smiled at him. Right after we got out of the boat my uncle stopped the act and just said to the attendants thanks for the ride. The combination of seeing my uncle act this way, the frustration of the ride attendants and the embarrassment of my mom and aunt made it one of the best days I ever had at that place. My uncle died of cancer six years later and I miss him terribly. Luckily, he was always doing stuff like that so I have tons of great memories with him. A group of us often went to my friend Ian's house at lunchtime in high school. Every day we'd walk out of the school gates, go to the spa, get a pot noodle, cup noodles, I think in the states, and a sliced loaf to share. Then we'd walk five minutes up the hill to his parents' house. Generally, we'd just use his kitchen, making toast, boiling the kettle for tea, and the pot noodles. Then, we'd settle in front of the TV, eating, drinking, and watching whatever was on that day. This was our ritual, almost every lunchtime for the latter part of our high school years. One day though, it was different. Sometimes, my friend would forgo the pot noodle, because he had been left food, by his mom, from his previous night's meal. This day, it was a plate of spaghetti bolognese. As he brought it out of the microwave, a delicious smell filled the kitchen. We all looked longingly at his hearty Italian lunch and then back at our dreary pot noodles. Most of the U.S. were resigned to our gray meal. All except Mark. As we sat in the front row, Ian sat pride of place in his father's chair directly front of the TV, with his large plate of bolognese on a coffee table. The rest of us were spread out on the large sofa. None of us had noticed Mark disappear, until he re-entered the sitting room with the pneumatic air rifle over his shoulder. Sometimes, we'd shoot targets and stuff down the garden after lunch whilst smoking cigarettes outside, so seeing the air rifle was nothing new. Casually Mark walks over to Ian's bolognese, points the barrel just inside bolognese at the edge of the plate. Ian's face is suddenly pale. Say hello to my little friend. Mark pulls the trigger. In an instant, the bolognese went from the plate to covering literally everything on the side of the room Ian was sitting. Pieces of delicious spad bowl are everywhere, hanging off paintings, all over the wall, dripping of the radiator, covering porcelain ornaments, the side of the TV. And also Ian, his white school shirt now stained red with Italian tomatoes. Ian was so shocked he didn't say anything. Mark too was shocked because he'd pumped up the pneumatic air rifle well beyond the recommended amount and was now looking at the result of a pelletless blast of air meeting the bolognese and bolognese meeting the living room. Needless to say, the rest of us were in immediate hysterics. Tears of laughter at Mark fruitlessly trying to clean up the mess. Ian raging at Mark about his parents' living room. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.